My name is uh, Harald Giesen from the University of Stuttgart in Germany. And my group deals with ultra-fast nano-optics, plasmonics. And um, I try to confine light as much as possible. So my research is mostly driven for looking for new applications. If something comes out that an engineer can later use that is doable, reproducible, reliable, gives you a certain functionality that you didn't have before, that's something that excites me. Previously, in plasmonics, uh, we used mostly evaporated gold. A typical thickness is 100 nanometers. And then just at the top surface between the gold and the air or some dielectrics, the plasmons propagated. And the properties of these plasmons are very much governed by the light properties. So their wavelength is also just or more or less the wavelength of the light. However, if we have a very thin, kind of a two-dimensional layer of gold, then the top surface plasmon and the bottom surface plasmon, they can interact with each other. And they form coupled states. And there is a anti-symmetric and a symmetric state that can form. And the anti-symmetric is the one that we usually observe, the long-range plasmon, but the symmetric state, that is the one that gives such a short range surface plasmon and that leads to the nanofocusing. And the thinner you can make your structure, the better that coupling is. So ideally, we would go to even smaller thicknesses. However, then our flakes are not as big anymore. So there is a trade-off. So we try to get the best gold as possible, atomically flat, single crystalline. And we have ultra-short laser pulses, 15 femtoseconds at 800 nanometers, excite surface plasmons in them. And the properties of that gold layer, which is quite thin, 20 nanometers, is such that the surface plasmon wavelength is shortened dramatically. And then we can create hotspots of just uh, 60 nanometers. And they are reproducible. They are given just by the geometry. There are no surface defects, no protrusions. And that is quite important for any kind of nano-optical, nano-focusing applications, such as heat-assisted magnetic recording, imaging, and so on. With our ultra-fast uh, spectroscopy setup, which is done in collaboration with uh, two other German groups, we can actually watch the surface plasmons as they propagate along on the surface and um, then see how they form this nanofocus, how they confine the light. And if you choose a geometry which looks like a spiral, then you can see those plasmons spiraling around, forming uh, vortexes, vortices, and you can watch them spiral around, form and dissolve again. Um, I think that has not been done before. That is quite unique and it is very insightful to, to watch this formation. And probably there are more applications also of this orbital angular momentum. Maybe for optical data storage, for trapping of objects, for giving angular momentum to these objects. When you talk about plasmonics, I think the um, sensing Metasurfaces, beam steering, polarization control, surface enhanced spectroscopy, they are very mature. And uh, our own group and other groups have built, for example, plasmonically enhanced sensors that give much better sensing performance than anything else out there. When it comes to aspects such as nanofocusing, data storage, and so on, I think we are still in the stages of research and development. When it comes to the micro-optics, that has um, arisen very fast and uh, can be taken very fast into applications, to real-world applications, into engineering. So maybe some of the early promises of plasmonics, such as the super lens and the negative refractive index, might, have, might not have materialized so fast, but other applications where you use the local fields, the field enhancement, 
that can be done very reproducibly and that has matured more and will drive applications. And then merging micro and nano optics I think is pretty exciting. Because the micro optical world gives you access to the far field, to optics as we know it. The nano optics is sometimes a little bit uh, you know, too academic. But I think merging both fields can lead to new functionalities such as beam steering, polarization control, coupling of quantum systems with each other and with a far field that cannot be achieved by any other means. That is exciting. <laughs>